know, I just did an interview with uh, Robert, and he tells me that you contracted to have this airplane built. Yes, um, this is a dream of mine for a couple of years now already. Uh, since I first saw Blario, I wanted to have one. And Robert actually uh, fulfilled my dream. I saw his uh, three-quarter scale at Oshkosh last year, and I had to find him and convince him to build his aircraft. Did you come to Oshkosh looking for, for this, or was it just off the chance that you found it and then... No, I actually found his uh, three-quarter scale on the internet. And uh, I dropped him a couple of emails, and uh, we met at Oshkosh to discuss this project. And uh, so we got it going last year after Oshkosh. You had this airplane built for a specific purpose. Why are you doing what it is that you're going to be doing? Well, I actually had this aircraft built to cross the English Channel to reenact the uh, original English Channel crossing by Louis Blerio on the 25th of July 1909. Um, I'm doing uh, aviation history research and I'm writing books on Blerio aircraft. And I actually uh, want to reenact this flight because I love, uh, I love uh, aviation history. And that's why I want to do it. Now, how did you get involved with the Bellario, though? It seems that you have, you've got a specific focus here on one airplane rather than aviation history in general. Well, since I first saw this aircraft, it was love at first sight. I saw it in the Paris uh, Air Museum uh, in Paris, Chal in Paris uh, Bourget, and when I saw it, I knew that I had to get one. It was love at first sight, and uh, finally Rob realized my dream. Now, you're a fairly big individual. Uh, been in the airplane to make sure that it fits you and all the others? Yes, when I arrived in Oshkosh last year, I had a close look at uh, Rob's three-quarter scale and I actually tried it on, I just got in and it was too small for me. And I wanted to have something that was really historically accurate or as close to accurate as possible. So uh, we discussed it and we finally made up the idea to make it, make it a full-scale replica. Now, why did you choose the Rotec radio engine? Well, in the first place, uh, we wanted to put the VW engine in, but it didn't look uh, historically accurate. Um, on the Blerio, on the original one, uh, to fly with an Anzani fan-shaped engine, that's uh, something very, very hard to find, an original engine. So basically, we made up the idea to replicate the uh, a Gnome engine, which was a rotary engine, and this comes to as close as possible to the look of the Gnome engine. Pascal, you've indicated that this is very close to original as far as the the theme of the aircraft goes. This is a very unique suspension system. Can you explain a little bit about it? Well, basically what happens is that um, we have elastic bands here and we have this um, structure up here. Uh, once you put weight on the aircraft, this structure is going to move up and down here and that's what the original suspension system was as well. On the original aircraft, actually, the gear was pivoting, which we didn't do on this one to have it more stabilized. But this is quite close to the original suspension system of 1909. Uh, the wheels again, would this be the type of wheel that they would have used? Or? Uh, well, these are a little bit more solid than the ones they used in the old days. In the old days, they didn't have any aviation wheels or stru hard structure wheels, so they used uh, bicycle wheels or motorcycle wheels on the original ones. Now, the wire bracing, is this basically the size of cable and so on that they would use? Or have you changed the, the cable bracing on the wings as well? Uh, we have changed it uh, to make it more uh, more secure, more safe. Uh, it's a little bit um, thicker wire than, than it used to be in the original days. In the original days, uh, when you used one of the wires anywhere in the aircraft, the whole structure was very weak and you, you have risk of crash. Whereas with these wires, if you lose a wire anywhere on this aircraft, uh, the aircraft will be safe to fly still. The climb speeds that we're going to get out, what kind of climb rate, uh, what is the saw going to come in at? The, the cruise speed here is going to be somewhere around 60 miles per hour and the climb rate um, somewhere around 3 to 500 feet per minute. Uh, 3 to 500 feet of cruise power and around 1200 at full throttle. We've achieved yeah. 1200 feet per minute at full power settings and light loads. So how many hours have you actually got flying the airplane now? Uh, I didn't fly the aircraft actually yet. Uh, we just had it flight tested by the uh, two test pilots of Aerodrome Aerodromes. So, you're, what's going to be the next stage? Are you going back up to Aerodrome Aeroplanes and then learn how to fly this thing? Yes, the next step we're going to do is uh, in two weeks' time I'll, I'll go to uh, Aerodrome uh, Aeroplanes and I will uh, actually work out a test program for myself together with the te two test pilots who will uh, guide me into flying this aircraft. And uh, as soon as I'm ready, I will do about 20 to 30 hours uh, in about two weeks, and then we will ship the aircraft over to Europe. So 
the airplane's going to just get crated up and then uh, shipped over by yes. boat? Yes, by boat. We're going to ship it over by boat to Europe. I will pick it up in uh, Belgium and then we ship it back to Luxembourg. And we will take it uh, from Luxembourg to France, to Calais, where we will reenact the, uh, the original flight on the 25th of July 2009. Yes, uh, we have a website that will come up next week. Um, it's called earlyaviator.org, and it will be online next week. Thank you very much for your time.